were, you were advocating at the Supreme Court, I think it was last week, right? Because, or maybe it was this week, that the, the Supreme Court is looking at Biden's, Biden's giveaway to people who own who debt. Giveaway is your term, not my term. Well, we are, they have college debt. Long, yeah. Okay, and we're going to give them money. Are we're we, going to forgive debt. Well, we're, <laughs> okay. we're arguing about the same thing, but there was no argument. We're giving the money away. Okay, so I just want to read you this. And again, this is against why people sometimes, I think, question some of what you're saying. Uh, this is a survey, student loan forgiveness recipients. Seventy-three percent of applicants say they are likely to spend their extra money on non-essential, including vacations, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. They, they admitted that. Oh my God, he is so right wing, dude. He is so incredibly right wing. First of all, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. Like, why did you put smartphone in there? Smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. What do you mean? Smartphone is like everything. Drugs and alcohol. Extra money on non essential, including vacations, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. What do you mean, smartphone? T survey of 200 people at ASU? Yeah. I, I don't actually understand why he added smartphone into this. Or I guess like the people surveying the, the ASU, 200 ASU students uh, added that in there because like it kind of makes no sense. Yeah, no, sh like people will spend money on their smartphone. Um, not essential drugs and vacation, insulin and paid leave, hmm? No, I mean, who cares? And who cares ultimately? Like what, what does this take? Like, oh, well, you know, if you have, if you get debt relief, when school should be free in general, when, when college should be free already, uh, if you get debt relief, if you get a little bit of uh, financial restitution from that and you want to spend it on whatever you want to spend it on, like, oh, that's not allowed. Like, fuck you, I hate it. I hate this argument when people are like, people are buying steaks with their EBT card. It's like, you, man. What, if you're poor, you're not supposed to eat steak? Like, what, what are you talking about? What the f are you talking about? Especially when it's some dumb, like, uh, uh, some dumbass, like, Bill Maher, who, like, does everything. Like, this dude still goes to sex clubs and shit, bro. What? Is it only for you because you hit the lottery and got lucky enough to make it in Hollywood? So only you get to have fun? Like, fuck you. People should be able to have fun. If they want to buy shit, they can buy shit. Talk about giveaways. Under Trump, the Congress voted for a trillion dollars in tax breaks for the richest people in this money, in this country, and the largest corporations. That's a giveaway. We yeah. just increased military spending with very little discussion. I don't know if you know this, by eighty billion dollars. Great military take. Military industrial complex, including the Democrats. Pardon they, me. The Democrats vote for it too. Yes, absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. right. All right. But that's socialism. The military. That's crony socialism. Well, that's right. Crony capitalism. But but the it, military uh, isn't capitalism. That's that's the government. No, but it's who owns the military industrial complexes. All right. But anyhow. Right. All right. So when you talk about... Yeah, exactly. No, it's 100% correct. Exactly. The military is, in a way, no different than, uh, you know, people talking about how, like, in China, you have people dying in Foxconn facilities, which, like, things have gotten significantly better in China. But it's literally that. you got American men and women, young 17-year-old uh, dickheads, getting enlisted to go and, like, kill people overseas and get f***ed up. Specifically, so Raytheon's profit margins look better. Like at least China threw its labor force at a po uh, at the problem, and then collectivized the gains so that like they could uplift themselves and eradicate extreme levels of poverty in in less than a couple decades. In America, we throw bodies at the problem so that Raytheon executives can make a tidy profit. Maybe. Yeah, Iraq was so socialist, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Obviously, it's not. Right-wing Americans or pro-capitalist Americans love shitting on China and saying like, oh, well, you know, China abused its own uh, labor force in order to, um, you know, uplift China. And I'm like, bro, we abuse our own labor force in the same way. And we're not making like valuable things. We no longer have a robust manufacturing industry. We no longer have, are making things that are of uh, a value. We don't have manufacturing here. All of our output is about destruction. And that destruction is at the behest of the military industrial complex. And the profits of that destruction are not even socialized. The gains are not socialized. Only the losses are. So did America. No, it's the f it didn't. And no, it's not. You are wrong about that. Major corporations in this country that make billions in profit don't pay a nickel in taxes. Billionaires have an effective tax rate lower than that of a truck driver or a nurse. 
you have a generation, you talk about this younger generation right now. I got around the country and I talked to a lot of people. You know, I don't know anything about that poll, but I can tell you, I've talked to nurses who are working their asses off, doing the right thing. They leave school $70,000 that they can't afford now to get married and have children. They can't afford the housing that they desperately need. So the truth is you've got a generation that everything being equal, the younger generation will have a lower standard of living than their parents. You and I, and I'm a little older than you, can remember 50 years ago, what did it cost to go to the University of California? Remember? 50 bucks. For yeah. 500. Virtually free. City yeah. University. He's wearing him down. God, Bernard, do it. Do it to him, Bernard. He's wearing him down. Slowly but surely. He's doing a decent job at it. New York, right. virtually free. And right well, now, these young people are leaving school deeply in debt. They're struggling economically. They deserve a break. It, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Why didn't you agree with it before then, you asshole? You feel like the Democratic Party... Uh, and you, you take your shots at them, and you know you're not. You caucus with them, and you run at. I love, dude. One of the things that makes me a relatively popular figure in in these spaces is quite literally the reality that I shit on the Democratic Party. I shit on the Democratic Party when they do things that are worthy of being shitted on, and people love that. Okay, because people love to hate the Democratic Party for sometimes good reason, and oftentimes for bad reasons too, but. There is nothing better than, than doing that because Dems do suck and they need to know that. As one, but you're not completely part of them. Right. Uh, you say they feel like they uh, abandoned their cause to the beautiful people. Who are the beautiful people? I'm guessing it's hey, not Hey, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking really beautiful tonight here in L.A. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> well, here's the point. Here, the point that I was making is... When FDR was president, when Truman was president, even when JFK was president, you go out on the street and you say to people, which party represents the working class of America? Most people, I think, agree, would have said the Democratic Party. Correct. All right. Today, you go out on the street, and that is not the sentiment. In fact, the Republican Party probably has more adherence than, than to the Democrats. How did that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. It happened because 30 years ago, the Democrats said, hey... Republicans are getting all this corporate money. We want it, too. Let's go out and get it. And let's forget about the people who are working 50 or 60 hours a week. So you're sitting out there somewhere in the Midwest. You can't afford health care. Maybe your job went to China and you're earning half of what you used to make. Your kid can't afford to go to college. And you're looking at people on television doing all of their stuff, and you are saying, who the hell gives a damn about me? All right? Who cares? what my life is about, who's addressing the crises facing my life, the pain that I'm experiencing. We have something, I don't know if you're familiar with the expression, it's called diseases of despair. Of course. All right. And what the doctors tell us, we have a life expectancy above and beyond COVID, which is in decline. It's in decline because people feel hopeless, their jobs are taking them nowhere, worried about their kids, and they're turning to alcohol, drugs, and even suicide. All right. We've got to restore hope to the American people. Working class are the majority of people in this country. They are hurting. After 50 years of exploding technology, they're earning less than they did than they, than they did before. All right? You sound like you're running again. Third, <laughs> no? Third no, time, I'm just third, talking about the book here. Third but, time the charm? You, people usually write a book when they're about to run. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I don't get he runs again, I, I vote for him again. I vote for him as many times as he wants to run, you know? And he runs again, people are going to be like, he's too old, so is Joe Biden, but that don't matter because he's the most electable, because why? Because the TV man told me so. You know, he runs again, I vote for him again. You know the song and dance. I don't give a